We've just described the process view of an organization. And what the process view is telling us, the sequence of things we do, that's the work that's accomplished. Another perspective of that same flow of work can be taken by taking a look at the collection of tasks or things that are done in there. And this is called the functional view of that work. To do this, we can take a look at, as we've described already, the fishbone diagram or even a mind map. And the idea is what we're going to do is we're going to structure that work so that we see different categories of things. So if we talk about the 7M categories, for instance, if we talk about money, we can talk about investment money. What are the funds required to invest to create the resources necessary for the process? Or we can take a different perspective from money and take a look at the consumables. What is the money required for the operations and maintenance of the process? We can take a look at manpower. We can take a look at what are the skills required. We can also take a look at what is the development plan for the people there. We can take a look at motivation. We can take a look at recruitment or selection of people. So there's lots of different views that we can have in terms of the functional perspectives. We take a look at measurements. We can see what is the measurement system necessary? What are the measurements? Have we specified them properly? Do we have the right measurements and do we have control mechanisms? Are the sensors good? Did we calibrate them? So as we're looking at this functional view, what we start seeing is this is going to provide us with a very comprehensive view of all the components that we will then integrate into the flow of work, which we call a process. So two different graphical representations are required to understand the process. One is the flow of work, and the second is the flow of things that are used to create that work. And so this functional view, we can see in the, the fishbone diagram. And then it comes back as a very useful tool throughout the whole process of our analysis. So how do we do it? It's not just a one-off tool that we use in the measure phase. But as we start going through the process, in the analyze phase, we can use this to start sorting out what of all of those components of functions are measurable events. Which ones can be controlled? Which ones are noise? We can't control them. Which do we have to treat in different ways? And so we don't have to just think about the process and the work that's being done. We have to understand all of those components of the things around the quality of the work that's being done. So when we understand the quality of the things happening there, we see that there are different levels and choices we have to make. If we're talking about equipment, we have different settings. If we're talking about a conveyor line, how fast does it go? What is the limit? Where does it work well? Where does it fail? So all of those are things that can help us conduct a better structured inquiry in the process in terms of its performance. Now, in the analyze phase, we want to develop a lot of X's, a lot of understandings. So the more comprehensive we make the functional analysis, the better understanding we'll have of all the possible things there are to analyze in that step. There are a couple of different diagrams that I've seen from different people who've done processes. And it wasn't unusual for them to have in an engineering process over 200 different factors identified as worthy of analysis and understanding in a fishbone diagram. Now you might say, that's a lot. Well, yeah, but that's the level of detail we have to get to to do an adequate engineering analysis to make sure we really truly understand the process. Well, what happens a little bit later in our process? Maybe we get stuck and we don't really understand where we're going and what we have to do. What do we do next? We can always then go back to the functional diagram and say, what are the things that were noise or the things that we said we couldn't control? Are those factors something that's hidden in the residuals of our analysis? Is it something that is an unexpected event, you know, an unexpected consequence that there's a change in those uh, different factors? So again, we can use these to understand what's going on. When we're building an experiment in the improve phase, these different factors can come back and say, well, it may not be important for my experiment, but I have to control this. Because otherwise, it's going to be an unexpected impact on the experiment, and it may totally destroy what we're trying to un uncover. So again, a comprehensive analysis of the fishbone diagram. I cannot really overemphasize. Or if you want to do it as a mind map. Uh, the difference between the fishbone diagram and, and the mind map in my mind is that the mind map is actually can be superior. Because the fishbone diagram doesn't tell you about interaction events between individual bones on the diagram. Whereas in the mind map, you can create such interactions. And you can have a much more dynamic effect that's mapped or evaluated based on those interrelationships. 
In the real world, no factor stands on its own. And so what we see in the real world is very often there will be many interaction effects. However, until recently, most people have only looked at things one factor at a time. Many of you in engineering studies have been taught to keep one factor constant or, or keep all factors constant except for one and move it and see what the output is on the experiment. But we'll see later when we talk about designed experiments, that's not a very good structure because we never then see the interaction effects which occur in the real world when both factors move simultaneously. And so what we want to do is we would like to understand what are all of those conditions and how can we think about them at the very basic level, the atomic level of their existence in the process and the potential that they have for influencing us. That's really the value of the functional analysis.